Jesus Christ has the power and authority to forgive sins. Let's take a look at Mark 2, 7 to 12. I'm going to slowly go through this. Actually, Mark 2, verse 5. Pick it up in verse 5. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now stop right there. See, the privilege, they're saying the privilege of God is the forgiveness of sins. They're saying, who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus says, sons, your sins are forgiven. He says, no, 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 only God can do that. Keep going, verse 8. Immediately, Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were reasoning that way, another evidence of his divinity, they were reasoning that way within himself, themselves, said to them, why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and pick up your pallet and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. Now think about this. (laughs) Seriously, this is a very straightforward question. Which is easier? If, If you say to someone, your sins are forgiven, or pick up your pallet? walk. (laughs) Of course, you can't verify or validate the ability of someone just saying your sins are forgiven. How would you know? But if you tell that lame paralytic to get up, then you can say, whoa, he must have the power to forgive sins. And that's why Jesus says this. That's why he does it. Another demonstration of divinity. He has the power and authority to forgive sins and he heals. Now, notice this. Right before Christ's ascension, he says, has the last few words that he has with his disciples. Look at Luke 24, verse 44. Now he said to them, these are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Now I've bolded that right there. Hold on to that thought. Jesus is saying all about me on the screen all about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Verse 45, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. Notice verse 47, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in the name, in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Now, I've highlighted in blue in verse 47, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins. I've underlined it, All right? Repentance for forgiveness of sins. Now, let's go back. Think about this. He said, all must be fulfilled according to the law and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Let's take a look at some of four Old Testament scriptures that demonstrate Christ has the power to heal and to forgive. Psalms 103, verses 1 to 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Notice verse 3. Who pardons all your iniquities. I've underlined pardon. And who heals all your diseases. Notice the parallelism there. Who pardons your iniquities. Who heals your diseases. You see, Pardoning iniquities is the same as healing your diseases. See, forgiveness of sins is healing. Right? Salvation means to heal. Right? So we're being healed of our diseases, the disease of sin. Notice Psalms 86, verse 5. For you, O Lord, are good and ready to forgive, and abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon you. See, if you want your sins forgiven, you go to Christ. He's ready to forgive. Anyone, all who call, no one is 
excluded from this great privilege and great opportunity to be healed from your sin. Come to Christ. He will heal you. He is ready to forgive, just like he was ready to heal that man full of leprosy. I am willing. Be cleansed. And he touches him. He'll touch your life. Look at Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Wow. I will not remember your sins. I love that verse. I will not remember your sins. I don't want my sins to be remembered. I want them expiated from the universe, and that's what Christ is going to do. In fact, notice this verse. This is one of my favorite passages, Micah 7, 18, and 19. Who is a God like you? Now, let me stop right there. The first thing, if you just stop at that phrase, who is a God like you? The first thing we think about is who is a God like you? Who is a God like you is all-powerful, all-knowing, omniscient, everywhere, all-sovereign, who is a God like that? Wow, there's no God like that. But notice how Micah answers this question. Who is a God like you? Back on the screen. Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity? Amazing. Who is a God who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious act of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. He delights in unchanging love. That is the character of God. That is the character of Christ. Verse 19, he will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. Yes, you will cast all their sins into the depth of the sea. I love that because that is basically removing your sins forever. You say, how do I say that? Well, I like to compare this with Revelation 21 on the screen. Notice this. Look what it says in Revelation 21, verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and there is no longer any sea. Wow, wonderful. Not only are your sins forgiven, but he's going to expiate them and remove every record of them, provided we come to Christ. It's wonderful. That's the kind of God we serve. Who is a God like you? Now, what does this mean to us? Let's go back to the New Testament to Colossians 3, verse 13. Bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against you, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Oh, how important it is that we forgive others just as we were forgiven. In fact, you know this, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let me say that again. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So as we forgive, we're forgiven. Right? This is so important. The great price that Christ paid for us is immeasurable. All right? And he's asking us, if I've forgiven you, you forgive others. I don't have time to go through all these scriptures, but I just want to point this out. This is a salvation issue. This is a salvation issue. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I have a friend, and he's made a few mistakes, and he's hurt some people, and he's hurt. And you know what conversation I'm having with all of them right now? Forgive. Forgive. And you know what verse I'm sharing with him? Look at, on the screen, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Now, I know it's hard. You've been hurt. You've been betrayed. You've been stolen. You may have been physically abused, mentally abused. However someone has transgressed you, make the choice to forgive them. And if you say, I can't, it's impossible, then pray that God will give you the grace. Pray, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come upon me. Give me the Spirit of Christ. Give me the Holy Spirit so that I can extend forgiveness to them. Because whatever they've done to you is nothing 
it's a pittance compared to what, how you have offended God, the Father, the Almighty, how you've offended uh, Christ. And so it's so important. And I know for me, I won't go into the full story, but it took me some time to forgive someone who greatly, greatly hurt me and betrayed me. But I came to that conclusion that it was the right thing to do, and I forgave him. I forgive him. I, from my heart, it has to be from your heart. It's not about, you know, just saying, well, I forgive you, but still harboring hatred, still harboring unforgiveness in your heart. No, it's got to be from your heart. Completely release them. Release them, and you'll be free. Like what you see? Subscribe to our channel on YouTube, or you can go to angelsintheglen.org. That's angelsintheglen.org. We've got an entire series for you to take you through the events that must take place before Christ returns. God wants his people ready. It's not a time to fear. It's a time to be ready. I hope you'll join us.